Hi, my name is Glenn Weinrub, and today we're going to look at things climate scientists are not sure about by their own admission. Scientists refer to this as uncertainty, and it's bad. It's bad because we would like to know when disaster will occur, so we can assemble a list of things we need to do between now and then to prevent it. This video is a continuation of our previous video and therefore assumes the viewer is familiar with basic principles of climate science. We begin by focusing on sunlight that reflects off air pollution and back into outer space. As noted in video 7, this offsets global warming with cooling. In review, the length of the blue bar in this illustration is proportional to the amount of cooling from air pollution. What is most interesting about this bar is the error bar. This means scientists do not know if this is small or large. This value is unknown because it has never been measured, only estimated. In science, this is referred to as a free variable. This might seem like a minor detail, however, it is of profound importance. It means scientists cannot calculate with certainty when very bad things will happen to our planet. And this makes it difficult for national leaders to respond appropriately. Now let's compare the size of this error bar to the top red bar, which is roughly proportional to the total carbon dioxide emitted over 150 years. The red bar is not from one year of activity. Instead, it reflects 150 years of carbon dioxide emissions. As one can see, the amount of cooling uncertainty is about the same size as 100 years of carbon dioxide emissions. In other words, the degree to which scientists do not understand global warming based on their own admission, is enormous. As noted in our last video, the amount of eventual temperature increase after doubling carbon dioxide is referred to as the Earth Climate Sensitivity Constant, or ECS. ECS is essentially a way to quantify the size of slow climate feedbacks, such as melting ice sheets, and long-term cloud changes. Some scientists estimate ECS at around 3 degrees Celsius, while others think it is closer to 5. A higher ECS would mean the planet is more sensitive to carbon dioxide and that climate tipping points would activate sooner. Put differently, some scientists think the climate problem is bad, while others think it's worse than bad. In theory, we should be able to estimate ECS by observing the correlation between the concentration of carbon dioxide in atmosphere and planetary changes. However, there is a flaw in this strategy. We do not know how much warming is hidden by cooling. In other words, cooling is a mask of unknown size that hides the true extent of global warming. If the mask is small, the problem is only slightly larger than what we see. Alternatively, if the mask is large, the problem is much larger than what we see. To make this easier to understand, we can look at two possible scenarios, one with larger ECS and one with smaller. In the larger ECS scenario, tipping points will activate sooner, while in the smaller ECS scenario, we have more time. Unfortunately, recent observations suggest ECS is large. Put differently, there is evidence the climate problem is worse than previously considered. Unfortunately, cooling due to air pollution presents us with an additional problem. 
if we stop emitting carbon dioxide 100% tomorrow, most air pollution would go away along with its cooling effect. And the green bar would lengthen by the size of the blue bar. Also, if the green bar grows, the Earth energy imbalance would also grow, which means the global warming rate would also increase, possibly from 0.3 degrees per decade to roughly 0.45. After carbon dioxide is dumped into the atmosphere, it stays there for hundreds of years. Therefore, if we stop carbon dioxide emissions 100% tomorrow, cooling from air pollution would vanish quickly. However, the top red bar would shrink very slowly. In other words, the warming rate would surge and the temperature of the planet would continue to increase for many decades. Long story short, global warming is complicated. Okay, what about removing carbon dioxide from the atmosphere to shrink the top red bar? Would that help? This is called direct air capture, and we can run some numbers to get a better sense of this. It costs roughly $1,000 to extract one ton of carbon dioxide from air, and we have roughly 1,000 gigatons of additional carbon dioxide in atmosphere. Therefore, for $1 trillion, we could reduce the length of the top red bar by roughly 0.1%. This is another way of saying direct air capture is prohibitively expensive. Subsequently, national leaders would probably favor airplanes that spray reflective gases for tens of billions of dollars a year. Okay, let's summarize the situation with several key points. One, the global warming rate recently jumped from 0.18 degrees per decade to 0.3. Two, our planet seems to be more sensitive to carbon dioxide than previously considered. Three, we are at risk of North Pole sea ice collapse, which would increase the average global temperature by 0.6 degrees Celsius. Four, according to the MIT simulator, if we increase the global cost of fossil fuel fourfold with taxes, we would still get runaway climate change. And lastly, even when governments spend hundreds of billions of dollars on climate, they tend to waste almost all of that money. In conclusion, the situation is gloomy. So what's an intermediate step that might be helpful? Not a big step, just a little one. We'll discuss big steps in our next video. A small step might be to design experiments that measure how much sunlight reflects off air pollution. Designing experiments costs little. However, developing gadgets to conduct those experiments might cost tens of millions of dollars and take multiple years. And conducting experiments might cost hundreds of millions of dollars and consume more years. For details, click on the link in the description below. National leaders need to know what will happen and when with certainty. And certainty entails reducing the size of error bars with measurements. For this reason, one might consider this to be the most important measurement of this century. Okay, that's it for me, and I'll talk to you all real soon.